Yes, Have Some podcast is brought to you by Carnivorous Creations, your one-stop shop for all of your proton pack building needs. If you're in the market for a proton pack, head to carnivoruscreations.com. That's carnivorous with a K. You're going to find aluminum motherboards, resin parts, fiberglass shells, and a whole lot more. Find them on Facebook at Carnivorous Creations or head straight to carnivoruscreations.com. Remember carnivorous with a K and get started on an authentic screen accurate proton pack. Uh, everything's under control, situation normal. From the corner penthouse of Spook Central, all the way to Star Killer Base, this is Yes Have Some Podcast. Do I? Yes Have Some. Yes Have Some. You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags. The only place in the multiverse where you can love the book, hate the movie, but still buy all the toys. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. I'm not looking for a friend, I'm looking for a Jedi mask. A what? Please remember to hold on to your butts and get ready to get stressed with your hosts, Craig Goldberg, Abigail Gardner, and Jacob Walsh. All right, here we go. We're recording. We're doing a podcast. Again. Yes. Again. Live. Hi, everybody. Yes, never live. <laughs> what? <laughs> what Once we- a week. Can't stop it. We can't stop us now. Uh, welcome, everybody, to episode 123 of Yes, Have Some Podcast. My name is Craig Goldberg, and I am here with Abigail Gardner. What's up, guys? And Jacob Walsh. Yep, I'm here. Jake, you were at the gas station earlier. What'd you get? Um, I got a ginger ale. Nice. Mm, what's your uh, preferred ginger ale brand? Um, well, all they had there is Canada Dry, so that's what I'm drinking. Shout out to our I have a, Canadian friends. I don't know friends. if I have a preferred. They're all pretty good. I think good. I like Schweppes. All three of them. When it comes to ginger ale, I have a preference of in the can over in the bottle. Yeah. Okay. I, think it's, I think it's crisper. I like to hear I that. I get pss. it. When I used to work at a restaurant, you know, we didn't have ginger ale and people would order ginger ale. So I would just uh, fill up a Sprite with a dash of Coke. Mm. They never knew. That's a classic move. I don't I've believe done that. that before. You don't believe that I did that? Is that true? Yes. Is that true? For you, it's a it's a secret of the Sprite restaurant. Sprite and Coke equals ginger ale. I mean, is in, that the? I don't think that's the recipe because I've heard people say that. I'm like, there's no way that's like how that's ginger. A, there's yeah, there's no way that tastes like ginger ale. Well. People are dumb. People don't know the difference between Sprite and ginger ale. And if your taste buds that, well, have been you know worn what? down. What we're saying is no, it probably doesn't taste like ginger ale. But what we're saying are people don't even think about it. People don't even they, know what they're doing. Once the sugar hits gotcha. their lips, they're just happy with once it. They get also, to uh, a don't order ginger ale if you go to a restaurant. There you go. Yeah. That's our PSA for the week. Definitely. YHS PSA. Be nice to your server. Well, we got a lot to cover. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw Uncle Dan Aykroyd's at it again. Yeah. We're going to be getting to that pretty soon. Uh, it felt good today to be in a world where Dan Aykroyd was getting the rumor mill started for... I love that everybody's... The boys are back in town. I love that everybody's calling it Ghostbusters 3. <laughs> like, we're just... In, we're at the point <laughs> where we're pretending that the entire year of 2016 didn't happen. Didn't. Like, well, no... I mean, that movie's not technically Ghostbusters 3, so... Yeah, it's technically but, Ghostbusters to answer the call, right? It, it's... Te- te- if we're going <clears> to <throat> deal with technicalities, <clears throat> I wonder... I guess they would... If they... Listen, we'll get there. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I don't want to put get the back behind the horse. I want to get back yeah, behind the horse. Get behind the horse. Um, well, cool. Well, uh, we've had a fun couple weeks here. Uh, Jake, you were up this week. We were doing some Patreon stuff, recording some commentaries for future episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those of you who are on Patreon, uh, for yes, have some in the YHS VHS tier, you received your VHS this week for the month of October slash November. We do it every other month. And uh, got the audio commentary for Wes Craven's New Nightmare. I had a ton of fun Mm -hmm. recording that commentary. I love that movie. We've talked about that movie a lot here on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But uh, it holds up. And it it was I what I'm telling you is I had fun. I had so much fun. Jake, I had fun with you. Good. I'm I'm glad because that movie is amazing. Yeah, movie's amazing. 
Yeah. The only thing that was difficult was like sometimes remembering to continue commenting while watching it because it's like, oh, man, it's just good. It's just good. Yeah. But more than anything, it was fun to sit on the couch with you guys and just watch a movie with it, headphones on. It goes against my nature to talk during a movie. So doing a commentary <laughs> is like torture. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. my personal hell. Uh, but we do it all for you. My other personal hell is building Ikea shelves with Jake. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> why don't you guys talk about that? I dipped out. Uh, I don't know, Jake. Why don't, you, why don't you let everybody know what happened? Well, um, Craig said it's going to take 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Took like an hour and a half to put one up, ep- one, uh, one episode. <laughs> one Jake episode to show up. Jake, everything's an episode. We've done so much podcasting lately that everything's an episode. I was like, I was surprised earlier. I was like, hey, what'd you get at the gas station? This episode of ginger ale <laughs> and episode, episode 23 um uh, no we we put this uh we we went to ikea uh me and craig went to ikea together we did it was a yes, date did. we bought a bunch of uh what are the detoff shelves detoff shelves everybody knows um, those if you're a collector yeah. you know about detoff mm-hmm. well we put one up and it took forever and it was just there were a few like you know how putting those things are if, if everything's not like exact in the right spot it doesn't fit together, and we were just having a few issues. Technical which is, difficulties. Yeah. Yeah, which made me very annoyed because I was like, cool, I'm going to get home and have to build two of these. And um, I built them tonight, and they went together pretty quickly, pretty easily, much easier than it was for the two of us. Hey, so, I don't know. it's because you have that experience now. Yeah. yeah. You teach You're, a man yeah. to detoff, and you, you feed him for a year. And you, right. you buy a man a detoff shelf. I don't know what he does with it. I don't know how to put it together. It's <laughs> I difficult. love that. That's one of my favorite classic hymns. <laughs> I think that's a Bible verse. <laughs> that's a Bible verse. <laughs> buy a man a detoff. Uh, so cool. We put together some shelves. We had some fun. Uh, it, it was. It y- sounded like fun from the other room. Uh, it's, <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> And uh, it was good, though, because now, Jake, you can uh, uh, display your Godzilla figures in a manner that is to your liking, because for like a year or two, you've been saying you were not happy with your current Godzilla shelf situation. They now have gotten, you know, the shelves and and the lighting is on the way and they're going to be displayed in a in a way that they deserve. So. To be Feeling good about it. Good. good. Bobby Eighties is going to be jealous of Jake's house. Yeah, that's what we're saying. That's guys. what we're saying. That's our goal. Our goal is to we've make... all been collection shamed by I Bobby Eighties. Like, I like the <laughs> idea of anybody we meet. Our goal is for them to be jealous of us. One hundred percent. It's why we're successful. Oh, we have fun. <laughs> we have. A I good just time. quoted answer the call. Look at me. I'm very progressive. Oh, well, well. Um. Well, cool. So thank you to our patrons. Thank you uh, for giving us the opportunity to keep the lights on, pay the gas bill, buy a microphone, and uh, more than anything, get together on the weekends and record commentaries. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more about Patreon with Yes Have Some, if you want to support us for as little as $1 a month, head over to patreon.com slash yes have some. Okay. Here comes a segue. Stan Lee died. That sucks. Oof. It really sucks. It really sucks. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Having said that, when people say things like, I'm so shocked that Stan Lee died, I'm like, Right. He's 95. No, you weren't. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, I feel like out of all the celebrities. I was shocked every day I got online and he didn't die. (laughs) I don't want to. I was so surprised. I was going to say, if, if anything, this is the only celebrity death i think we all should have been pretty prepared for i don't yeah. know man i mean, Thank you, I mean and, and, you, uh, and i you, know that doesn't make it like it doesn't make it easier or, doesn't make it easier or whatever yeah. but like it was one of those things where we were kind of waking up every morning and being like all right how's stanley doing i know i did <laughs> <laughs> Let me call up Kevin Smith and be like, "Hey man, how's Kev doing? Hey, how, yeah. uh, or how's Stan how's doing? Stan doing? How, I want to know how Kev's doing. Yeah, he Kev's seems doing. like he's Kev's doing, well. doing good from the yeah. pictures that I've seen him posting and his daughter posting of him. So, um, but yeah, regarding Stan Lee, it is a bummer. Um, I feel like it's like you couldn't write a better way for someone to go out almost because he's left such a legacy behind um, through those characters, and I just. 
I mean, I'm not going to act like I know everything about Stan Lee, but like I take inspiration from some of those movies. And I think that those stories have touched a lot of people. Um, And I think that like he's he was like extremely creative and I think it's extremely inspirational for um, you know people to, to remember him in a positive way. And I think it's also very cool that we'll still be able to see little clips of him like in the upcoming Marvel movies. Yeah he already he filmed his Avengers 4 cameo so that's good. God we sound so superficial like yeah. what anything to say about Stanley? Good thing he filmed his cameo. Good thing he got those cameos in. Uh, <laughs> no I mean here's the thing like it's but it softens the blow in some way like there's it, just there's something. I think in 50 years people yeah. will be talking People will be like, wow, you lived at the same time as Stanley. Like he he created and helped create some of the uh, most famous superheroes and modern myths that I mean, these are characters that will live well beyond our lifetime, hundreds mm-hmm. and hundreds of years like Spider-Man's not going anywhere. Uh, so and he became a pop culture icon like he started doing a lot of conventions uh, a lot of people, I, we ne- I never met him, but a lot of people we know met him because everybody posted their pictures. And uh, I don't know, nobody really had a bad thing to ever say about Stan Lee. And uh, I, <laughs> I was not a comic book reader growing up at all. Like, I'm, I'm a bad person, I think, because I didn't read comic books. I liked Batman, yeah, didn't know anything about X-Men. My first Definitely bad person. My introduction to Stan Lee was like the first time I saw Mall Rats in 1997. That's like, a good introduction. I was just like, wait a minute, who? I, I was like, is this character made up for the film? <laughs> Did this guy really? Is this like an important comic book person? That might might honestly have been my first introduction too, because like I didn't have a, a background yeah. of reading comic books. And but also, Stan Lee in the last 15, 20 years has been more in the spotlight as. He's started to do all the cameos in the Marvel movies. And like I said, he's a cultural icon and, and uh, everybody will be remembering him fondly. I think it sucks that his last year or two, there was a lot of like kind of like elder abuse and people taking mm-hmm. advantage of him. And it's a good lesson. Listen, if you've got money, if you don't have money, it doesn't matter. No one's taking advantage of you if you don't have money. Right. Mm-hmm. If you're like an old person who's like 90 years old and you're like broke. I wouldn't worry about people like trying to like steal your. Then why are you listening to Yes I Have some podcasts? Yeah, then what are you doing? All? What are you doing? <laughs> I wonder if we have any like also, ninety year olds. Also, give us some money. Yeah. Also, also like I feel to... like we can wrap all this up and just say go to Kevin Smith's Instagram, read what he wrote because it's very well said. It's and much better. We shouldn't yeah. try to even say anything <laughs> exactly. else about it. It's much him. better than what we're gonna do. Thank you. Good night. We should have just read what he wrote. That God. probably would have worked as uh, if we wrote it. Yeah. 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 Abby has some words. <laughs> it's like, dear Stan. Dear Stan. <laughs> when I cast you in Mall Rats, like when I gave birth to my. Daughter Harley. <laughs> oh, wait, that's not even true. <laughs> Kevin Smith Kevin gave Smith birth gave to his birth daughter Harley. Harley. In my um, world. So, yeah, it's all, it always sucks losing somebody. Uh, but Stan Lee uh, lived a, an amazing life and gave us tons and tons. He lives on. He lives on. He lives on. Through, I think when it's all said and done, people, maybe at the Oscars this year or something, they'll say that Stan Lee lives on his memory through Yes Have Some Podcast. I don't think <laughs> <laughs> you think that's what they're gonna say? Yeah, probably. Uh, God, Most guys, likely. I got. Uh, it's hard. I got Uncle Dan on the brain. Well, you know, somebody like <laughs> Stan Lee creating characters that we all know and love. Okay, all right. Yes. You guys ever heard of Yes Have Some podcast social media? Yes. It's a good social way. Mead? Social mead. Uh Before we get going on today's fuck budget and uh, things of that nature, I did want to let everybody know that you can always find us on social media at YHS Podcast, Instagram, and Twitter. Facebook.com slash yes have some cast. And of course, if you want to listen and continue to listen and get those episodes of Yes Have Some Podcast every week without having to do anything, make sure that you're subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And we ask it all the time, but we mean it. Stars. <laughs> what is that? A s- five stars are born. <laughs> Sorry. Did I get you? Is that a new? Is yeah, that the new just movie? give us five stars. We need five stars. Yeah. Uh, Go to iTunes, leave Yes Have Some Podcasts to review. Let us know what you think and leave those five-star reviews. They help us more than you could ever imagine. I know I leave reviews for podcasts that I love, but only after they beg me for like a year. Mm -hmm. It takes me a good year of listening and then finally being like, okay, I'll give you the damn review, you fucking psycho. Uh, So I hope that's what you're talking about. 
Uh, Talk about us. Me. That's the problem. I'm listening to me. I don't. I'm like one of those people. Like you know when a baby, uh, like a, its parent leaves the room, and the baby thinks its parent just disappeared. Yeah. That's me listening to our podcast. I don't. I can't put two and two together that that's actually us on the other side. Oh. I think it's other people, and okay. I say things like, "Wow, I bet they're good looking." <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, yes, have some podcast also has an official Facebook discussion group called YHS Group Therapy. It's a fun place to go after episodes and in between episodes to talk about. We haven't really talked about it in a while. We do a thing called a barge here at YHS. This originated back when the uh, Jabba sail barge was being crowdfunded through Hasbro. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it was like five, six hundred dollars. It was a big investment. People were like shuffling around money, moving uh, finances between accounts to obtain a, uh, one of these barges. And we kind of coined the phrase as barging is when a collector of toys or any other kind of collectible makes an irrational purchase, a purchase and uh, maybe spends money they shouldn't. Mm hmm. But it feels good to barge. So those those right. personal like Jake, you barged a couple times recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We went to some toy stores, bought some I shelves. Love barging. Yeah. Um, Abby, you've barged. I barged. It's almost my birthday, so I'm I'm gonna barge pretty hard. A birthday hard barge is one on of the rare birthday. ones. Only happens once a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, YHS listeners like to get on group therapy and, and show us their barges, big and small. My favorite thing, and uh, you guys can comment on this. I love when people get on there. And they're like, not sure if this qualifies as a barge. And then they'll post what they got. And I'm always kind of like, yeah, that's a barge. But sometimes in my head, I'm like, eh, not really. Is, is there a dollar <laughs> amount that like makes it a barge or not? I, I would. I don't know what the equation is. I think it's next. Next time somebody posts one and it's not quite a barge, we're going to have to be like, hey, you know what? You need to follow the rules here or you're going to get banned from this page. Ban them. Oh, em. man. Just follow immediate. the barge rules. I, I feel like the equation, I, I haven't figured out all the math. Maybe we need like Matt Damon and Goodwill Hunting to get out a chalkboard and figure out what constitutes yeah. a barge. But I think we should write a definition and then put the definition on a coffee mug. Okay. And then, yeah. <laughs> so I just way, want it. Before yeah. they drink coffee out of it? Yeah. Barge is a verb. To barge. Yeah. Uh, to barge or not to barge. It has something to do with the amount of money you're spending relative to how much you have versus the quality of the product. Relative now, to how much can, you even need the product. I, I wonder if barge can have two definitions here. Go on. It, it can have the normal definition that, we, that we've given it. But then maybe a, a barge could also be when you decide you need to sell something big. When you decide to sell something big, yeah, like a barge. <laughs> when you oh, sell your barge, like a barge. Oh, oh like no. when you sell your barge. Yeah, I sold my barge. Did I ever admit that we, on the podcast? I, I got. I was literally I getting stressed thinking about that. I sold the rights to my barge. Is what I did. <laughs> you okay. Because right yeah. because the barge hasn't even. You haven't even. It's not in our hands yet. It's like yet. in sports when they they trade for a player to be named. It's like a later, concept. Later. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it, I think it has to do with. Um, like if you go to you parlayed the, your here's barge. the thing if you go to the dollar store and you buy a diecast Stay Puft Marshmallow Man for three dollars, that's not a barge. That's not a barge unless you only have like five dollars to your name. Then it, oh okay. That's so when you're poor, everything's a barge. I was gonna say if you I was gonna say if you buy three of those or more, that's a barge. Yeah. Yes. If you're buying multiples of the same thing, that's a barge. I don't care if they're a dollar a piece. Yeah. We okay. should, after like this that. podcast, have a barge meeting and define the rules and get a chart and just kind of break hey, this whole thing the down. First barge rule, chart. The mm-hmm. first rule of barge, you never tell your wife about barge. You don't talk about barge. <laughs> you don't tell wife about barge. Uh, anyways, um, Barge Simpson. And you have to take your shirt off. Sorry. So listen. If you want to buy stuff and talk about it or talk about anything going on in pop culture, movies, TV, toys, go to YHS Group Therapy right now. Before we get started on the fuck budget, Abby's going to tell you how to get there. Dude, so easy. All you have to do is sign up for Facebook, have a Facebook (laughs) account, and then search for Yes Have Some Podcast. Scroll down, see Yes Have Some Group Therapy. Click that. Go to our page. You will ask to become a member. I myself will probably approve you because I feel like I get those requests quickly and respond quickly. Um, And then you'll be in group therapy and you can make posts about your barge about whether and we'll deem you barge worthy or not barge worthy. And it's perfect. So come and join. Have you ever denied somebody's request? 
Yeah, uh, no. I have. I a couple never times. will. You have? Yeah. There's a couple times uh, people like have joined the group and then they start trying to sell their franchise patches. Oh, okay. For Ghostbusters, yeah. it's not like uh, yeah. Don't don't it's try to sell stuff. Groups. It's mm-hmm. not one of those groups. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, you have to. We're selling you stuff. You can't sell <laughs> us stuff. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> These although, are the rules. if you've got something good to sell. Hit me on the DMs. Yeah, DM us. All right, cool. Um, So, before we get today's fuck budget going, because we've got a lot to cover, because it's only been a week, but I feel like a lot has happened in the last week, most of it in the last 24 hours. (laughs) Today. Most of it happened today. I was, I told, I I texted you guys earlier, I was like, hey, podcasting is going to be easy Podcast wrote itself. The the content, anytime Dan Aykroyd opens his mouth, I'm just like, all right, well, this will be easy. Um... (laughs) But before we get started, I wanted to let everybody know about the brand new book that we are partnering up to tell you guys about how to pick up women with a drunk space ninja. It's book one in a three part series. And tonight's fuck budget is sponsored and brought to you by The Adventures of Duke LaGrange. It is a three part series of books. It is a space fantasy comedy written by YHS listener. J Key. The first book is out, How to Pick Up Women with a Drunk Space Ninja. You can get it on Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, anywhere books are sold. And guys, I've said this for the last couple weeks, but I'm going to keep saying it. It's very impressive to me that listeners of YHS Podcasts are now writing books. And I, I, I went up what, what are you, hold on. What are you doing? I'm just looking at it. I'm, I want to see the link so that I can go. So I can. Abby's just book. leading in to my computer screen. She's in my buffer zone. She's in my barge. Yeah, I'm in your barge space. I just wanted to see it. Jakey. J A Y K E Y. I just wanted to see the spelling of his name so that I could look it up and so other people listening could also look it up. J A Y K E Y. It's an easy name. Jakey. Look up the author. How to pick up women with a drunk space ninja book one of the three part series a science fiction comedy novel about bounty hunter duke lagrange and his oft inebriated japanese irish ninja companion ishiro shea they drink they have fun they dance i don't know if they dance i hope so do you think there's dancing i hope they have like a a fuck budget (laughs) space (laughs) the whole (laughs) the but they podcast while they're there Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. If you want to check it out, and we highly suggest you do, head over to Amazon, search for the author, J. Key, The Adventures of Duke LaGrange, How to Pick Up Women with a Drunk Space Ninja. We are very proud of our listeners. And like we always say, if you out there are doing something cool, if you're writing a book, if you're directing a movie, if you're, wait, time out. If you're directing a Ghostbusters fan film, we're probably not going to post about that. But we're going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to know about it. We, we want to know, know about, about it. <laughs> I feel bad. I've had so many people reach out about their fan films, and I'm like, oh, what's it about? And they're like, okay, imagine this. Oscar. Oscar. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> You don't know it yet, but it's Egon's son. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, mm. if you're doing something original and inspirational, like writing a book, like How to Pick Up Women with a Drug Space Ninja, we want to know about it because we want to help get the word out about what you're doing because we love you guys and we think you love it. Maybe you hate us. Do you ever have podcasts where you listen to people? You're like, I fucking hate them. That you hate listen to? Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I had somebody tell me recently they don't listen to podcasts because they keep getting mad. And they, they can't argue with the person yeah, because it's pre recorded. Yeah. And that's why group oh, therapy is wow. good. Yeah. That's why group therapy is there. So yeah. should <laughs> we just say really polarizing opinions and like just piss people off? Is I think that, we do that already. That's, that's what we do. Okay. 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 We're leprechaun cast. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this leprechaun, <laughs> leprechaun thing has series. really struck a chord with people, Jake. I think you. Yeah. Have... People are mad. <laughs> Dude, people, people are have not spoken. Happy. I'm uh, standing by it. I, we know. Oh. Jake does not waver <laughs> on his strong opinions Mm-mm. of mythical Irish creatures and how they may or may not stack up against Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so cool. Let's get going on this fuck budget. We got a lot to cover. Coming at you now. I don't give a fuck. We'll do it live. Yes. <laughs> You like that? Coming at you right now. Not later, not tomorrow. Back. The Yes Have Some Fuck Budget, it's the segment that we do almost every week where we take five topics in the subjects of movies, toys, collectibles, things of our interest, 
and we break them down. Jake and Abby each have to allocate 10 total fuck bucks over five topics. They cannot spend <clears throat> too many. Can't go over. And there was some big spending last week. I think Jake spent six fuck bucks on something. And oh, uh, you know what that's called? Irresponsible. I, I did, but what was that about? I don't I can't know. Remember. Probably Leprechaun. Probably Leprechaun. Yeah. No, that's called a fuck budget barge. Hmm. Barge yeah. budget? It's a, bar- a budget it's a, barge. Yeah, it's budget a budget barge. No, a budget barge is like, a, that's like the weeks where there's not a whole lot going on. And we're like, all right, guys, what do you think about the trailer for the new documentary about <laughs> Zach and Mary make a porno? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why. It oh, looks so good. It looks like they really get oh, in like depth on like what made that movie what it was. Uh, Jake, we talked about that movie recently. You said it doesn't hold up. I got to go check it out. Do it. Okay, do I'm going to do that. All right. But this is not a budget do barge. It. <laughs> do it, do it. God. I wish our audience knew how many inside jokes we had that they don't even know about. They're so inside. It's like all the ghosts on Hill House, and Ooh. they're just snuck <laughs> in underneath things and in the window pane. If anybody could figure these out, maybe we could pay you back with a motorcycle of your own. Sorry. If you could fix one of these <laughs> Easter eggs up. Uh, all right, cool. Let's get going on this fuck budget. Number one. The trailer was released this week for the much anticipated, although I didn't know I was anticipating it until I saw the trailer. Detective Pikachu, it is the first live-action movie in the Pokemon universe. I know a lot of people are excited about it. Jake, when Yo. it comes to the defender, <laughs> when it comes to the Detective Pikachu, not easy to say. Trailer starring Ryan Reynolds. How many fucks do you give? Um, <clears throat> I kind of went back and forth, and 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 I had given this more fucks at first, and then I took some away. Not not because, um. Of just, just because there's kind of a lot on, on, on the fuck budget this, this week. Um, I gave it one. Um, but I'm, I, I'm not like, uh, I, I played Pokemon for a while. Um, I, I loved Pokemon snap on Nintendo 64. That game is so fun. Um, and I played a few of the like regular games enough to know like minimal, you know, Pokemon knowledge. I feel like detective Pokemon or Pikachu is like kind of a weird, uh, movie. Like that's just, I don't know. It just, it seems so weird to be like, Oh, Hey, we can understand him. It just, I don't know. It doesn't seem like that's what the games were anything like, but, uh, but it's fucking Ryan Reynolds and it looks cool. And there's like all these weird fucking monsters all over the place. Like it looks like it could be fun. So I'm into it. Only gave it one fuck, but, um, I would go see this movie. Cool. All right. Abigail, how many fucks? I'm giving this two very surprised fucks. Um, because yeah, I, this came out yesterday. I think I saw the trailer for the first time. Um, I've watched it like four or five times since. And, yeah, I had no reason to like this or to be excited for this movie. I liked Pokemon Go. I don't know, like, the history or the lore of Pokemon. I, I wouldn't even know the difference between Detective Pikachu and regular Pikachu. But watching One this, has a badge. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, this trailer was extremely funny. It had really good music, and it had Ryan Reynolds doing what I love best, which is, like, not being visible, but being very funny, because that's how he is in Deadpool, basically. You know what I mean? Like, you see Pikachu. I had no idea that he was voiced by Ryan Reynolds. And then when he does, like, that little joke about, I've been so lonely, it's like, it lands, and I'm... I'm that little Pikachu is adorable. I love that like his fur is very lifelike. The um, graphics are really good, and I like the main kid. He's from Fallen Kingdom. I think his name's Justice Smith. He seems like a really likable protagonist in this movie. Um, and just knowing nothing about the world of Pokemon, I am very eager to see this movie. It's like a buddy cop team up, like goofy, silly. The tone looks right, and like I said, it's funny and it's cute. And I like cute little menacing creatures. It, honestly, Pikachu kind of reminds me of my cat Jonesy. So I'm ready for this movie. I'm just sad they didn't try to make this kind of movie like in 1998 because it would probably be one of the worst things ever. Because be of the bad, graphics yeah. or because just of everything. everything? Just because yeah. they didn't make good movies back then. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, yeah. you, they didn't make good movies in what year did you say? Uh, let me take that back. <laughs> 1993? 98. <laughs> 
They oh, did. Okay. They did make good movies back I then. In 1993, I was like, okay, Jurassic Park? <laughs> chill. Hey, um, they only made good movies in '93. I think no, but like these kinds of movies didn't get treated with the kind of like respect yeah. back then. Like I saw we, somebody. Did you guys see that meme that's going around where it's like? Uh, kids these days in their childhood and it had like a picture of Pikachu from the game yeah next to what he looks like in the movie which is very faithful and he looks very good and then it was like what we got and then it has a picture of like a Goomba in uh, the, the Mario, Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, it's, pretty, <laughs> it's pretty amazing dude yes I know what you're yeah, talking about yeah if this movie was made in like 95 uh, Ash would have been played by like Liam Neeson or something <laughs> and like Pikachu would just it would just be a person like, pe- yeah, like just be John Luigazama. <laughs> yes. Okay. He's I was like, going to say Robin Williams, but good. Uh, good call. It would have been Robin. Wait. Oh. 98? I just. <laughs> flubber. Okay. Uh, I Ooh. know nothing. Ooh. I literally know nothing about Pokemon. It all happened <laughs> after my formative years. I think I was like 13 or 14. Like, I, I barely. Could do Power Rangers. Pokemon is like, what? What? What is this? Yeah. What are we doing here, folks? Okay, I can I, I, I can talk to you about talking turtles and Ghostbusters. Yeah. I don't know what these people. Yes. I, yes. What, I well, guess, you know what? You, train you these know monsters. What, you know, like work. I started. I, I played some some of the Pokemon games, and 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 it was like in the last couple of years. It wasn't when we were younger. And like, what kind of drew me to it was like, it was like, oh, you get to like hang out with a monster all day. <laughs> you get to all like right. train. A dinosaur to like kill other dinosaurs. Let's play. I'll play this game, and uh, you know it's not quite that, but uh, <laughs> it is kind of fun. And like it was kind of Jake cool seeing the trailer Owen. and being like, "Oh, I know what those are." Like, yeah. that's, I remember yeah. this guy. Like, that's cool. I uh, um, that kid does kind of annoy me though. Like, uh, I feel like that kid was a little annoying to me in Jurassic World. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but whatever, but whatever. That's yeah. that character. Like that, I'm I'm not like holding a character from another movie against the kid, but right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um. Here's the thing, though. I did enjoy the trailer. I like Ryan Reynolds a lot, and I, I think it's smart to do it this way. And I'm sure that's one of the things that like held them back from doing a movie like this for a long time, which is none of these characters like talk; they just make noises. So, right? Am I right? Yeah, po- Pokemon don't talk. Pokemon yeah. don't talk, but okay. now they do. They're dumbing it down for people like me. I'm like, oh, look at him. He's Ryan Reynolds. I wonder who that other one. Do you guys think we're going to get some other voice cameos, possibly? Like, maybe that's, like, something it's, that they're going to do? I guess it's possible, yeah. Yeah, with, I don't know the rules. But, of, it, I mean, it kind of looks like this kid is the only person who can. I mean, like, in the, in the games, like, yeah, they don't. They just say, like, their name, basically. You know, like that's what they say, their name, and that's it. So, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Why, like, why Pikachu can be understood all of a sudden, or just by this one person? You know what, guys? So, I guess we'll have to see the movie. Oh, we're gonna yeah, see. I don't it. know who, either. Who knows what? It, who knows what they could do with it? Yeah, uh, I, I did see. Like, it was announced that this was gonna be a movie. I don't know, maybe a year or or even more ago, they were talking about like, hey. Detective Pikachu is happening. And I remember at the time, um, everybody was like, Danny DeVito should voice Pikachu. And that would have been amazing. But I mean, Ryan Reynolds is good too. Ryan Reynolds is good. Mm. Uh, the, the trailer's really well done. I'm excited about it. And we'll, I'm sure we'll be seeing more uh, over the next little while. I think it's good for, uh, I think the kids will like it. Pokemon Go seems to be something that everybody still likes. Yeah. Do they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. I, I was so bad at that game. Yeah. I didn't catch anything. Yeah, I think people still play it. I don't see how it. that's possible. I'm so bad at games. Did you just not play it? Kind of. I yeah, just kind of didn't try. Didn't. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There, there it is. Yeah. All right, cool. Moving on. Last night on the hit show, the big interview with Dan Rather, which nobody's ever heard of. Love it. That <laughs> came on a channel, Access TV, that nobody has. Um, <laughs> Dan Aykroyd was, uh, he did an hour long interview. Uh, and in that hour, he spoke about Ghostbusters for a few minutes. And the things he said were pretty, uh, I don't know. But any chance of a real, honest Ghostbusters 3? Very, 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 very much so. Now, let me say this about the girls' movie that they made. The, 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 it was really good. And Paul Feig made a good movie 
and there's some great things in it, and the girls are great in it. I but just it was, I was what, mad what, at him because he cost too much, uh -huh. and I, I don't want to slag a fellow artist, but had it cost a little less, and had he maybe listened to some of our suggestions on budget, then there there might have been another girls movie that would have been great. Um, I'm sorry that's not happening because boy they were terrific Ghostbusters Kate and Melissa and and, um, and Leslie were just just great um, and uh, and Kristen Wiig of course uh, I love the, those women and love their performances and I, I I wished for them that they would have been able to make another one but so that door is closed now but yes to answer your question there is a possibility of a of a reunion with. Uh, with the three remaining well, Ghostbusters. Well, are we yeah. making a little news here? First of all, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I wanted to make the point that you were talking about this was not Ghostbusters 3, it was the women Ghost Ghostbusters yeah, yeah. of 2016. Mm -hmm. that yeah, year. yeah. But we're talking about a full-blown third Ghostbusters. I think Ghostbusters. we've got a story that's going to work, and uh, it's being written now by a really, really uh, good filmmaker. I can't say uh, their names, but um, he, uh, they're, uh, they're a good team, and they're, uh, they're making... Uh, they're making an effort to uh, to bring back all of the emotion and the spirit of the, f of the first two movies and, and then take it into the 21st century with the vernacular that's needed today to get, a, but get across to well, the audience. Well, I'm not sure we maybe make some news here, but I know for a long time, Bill Murray's reluctance, even refusal, mm -hmm. to have anything to do with the sequel kept you from making the movie, partly, it, out, partly out of respect to him. It, it, it you know, he, yeah, it didn't, uh, yeah, we weren't going to do it without him and, and, and uh, well, you know, I, I wish that we had done the second one sooner, but, you know, Billy was on to new things, and, you know, you can't drag a person to do a part unless he, he wants to do it. And he'd done the part of Venkman, and he thought he, that was fully explored. But, boy, he was great in the second movie. He's the greatest uh, comedic leading man in history. And, and, and uh, he was so terrific in that second movie. And the second movie holds up. There's some great stuff in there, the baby and Vigo and, and the river of slime and, uh, and you know... Just, uh, I'm very proud of the second movie as well, and, and I think to answer your question, we, we may, in the next couple of years, be able to do a full reunion with, uh, again, taking to the 21st century, because there's a whole new vernacular now, there's a whole new essence of communication with audiences that we're going to have to hit, so, but I think we can do it. And Bill Murray will or will not be in this, or is that yet to be decided? I think Billy will come, you yeah, know, the story's so good, and he'll, he'll come, even if he plays a ghost, I don't know. <laughs> Polarizing, I'd say, regard like in the way that people reacted to what you posted. Polarizing, eye opening. Some I don't people know. would say redundant. Some but people would say that. Either way, it's Dan Aykroyd in 2018 talking about the possibility of a new Ghostbusters movie starring the original cast. Abigail, you watched it. We posted it up on uh, Yes Have Some today, and uh, it's blowing up like hotcakes. Oof. People are into this. Easy. People have strong opinions. Yeah. When it comes to Dan Aykroyd talking about this new movie. And also talking about Answer the Call and his uh, thoughts and feelings on that. How many fucks do you give? I give this four very apprehensive fucks. That's the most fucks I think I've given in this entire budget. And, I mean, obviously, like, our bread and butter, our foundation, it's it lies in Ghostbusters. And so when Dan Aykroyd comes and, like, talks to the whole family, because that's kind of what it feels like when there's ever, like, a little snippet. Um, it is stressful, we watched this clip last night, Craig. You were like, like combing the internet to try to get a hold of it. Um, I and felt like I was you mining got somebody for to like send it to you. Yeah, I was like pieces. mining for Bitcoin. Yeah, we were like missing some of the translation because like it cut off. We're like, what did he say? What, what's the writing team? And honestly, I want to know what the writing team is. If it, if it's real, this is all like, are we being fucked with? Because this kind of feels like some of the same stuff that Dan Aykroyd always says. Well, let me give a couple more details on what he's. What, let me give the bullet points. He said. A, there's not going to be a sequel to Answer the Call because it costs too much to make. Paul Feig didn't listen to what they wanted to do, and it ended up not being as successful as it needed to to warrant a sequel, so therefore the door has closed. No more Girls Ghostbusters. That's basically what he said. They kept calling it The Girls One. It's kind of mm. kind of funny. Uh, not funny, but uh, very disrespectful. Uh <coughs> But also to Paul men. kept calling it the great... Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, just it's very weird. Uh, he said that there is a great possibility of the original team getting back together in a new live action. Well, he actually didn't say he live action. He said he action. thought Billy would come. He thought Billy might... Ah, oh, yeah, we gotta get Billy. Uh, he alluded to the possibility of a reunion. He, the, To me, out of everything, if you sort through all the shit, the most intriguing thing that he said was that it is currently being written by filmmakers that are very talented 
a team of filmmakers, implying that maybe there's more than one. And there are a lot of teams these days. So now that we've clarified all of that, Jake. Yeah. How's your ginger ale? It's, you know, it's pretty good. Um, it's from Canada, so they, they're pretty good up there. Um, Jake, is there enough Coke splashed in that ginger ale? <laughs> how many episodes would you give it? Uh, how, many th- <laughs> how many episodes? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. How many fucks? I, for, first of all, I, I love Dan Aykroyd, and, and I love that he keeps talking about, you know, Ghostbusters and he's and, I, and I'm, I'm very thankful that he is so, uh, you know, enthusiastic about it and like he wants to keep going. But I, I only gave this one fuck because I don't I, it doesn't matter to me that like we we do know that other people other than Dan Aykroyd have said like, yeah, they're, we're, we're working on some stuff now. I can't believe a fucking thing that Dan Aykroyd says. I can't. He he has literally been saying this for 30 years. It doesn't matter to me that he's like, we got a team of writers. Cool. You have been saying that your entire life. I, I just like, <laughs> I cannot believe it until somebody else words. says it. I just can't because I don't know. It's whatever. It's, that's what he does. No, and that's a fair opinion. I, I think, yeah, let's talk about this for a second. Cause I've, I've been, I've been mulling it over all day. Um, my counter to that, why I gave my four fucks real quick. I just think it's still exciting to hear him talk about Ghostbusters. Like no it, matter what, I'm still like, tell me about the is. rabbits, Dan. So yeah. continue. Yeah. No, you're right. It is exciting, but I'm just saying like, and I also am like hoping I, that I fan fest have, has announcements. I, well, I just feel I'm literally like I will grasp at anything at this point, like hoping that Fan Fest ends up being like an announcement deal. So like for yeah. me, I'm like, well, may- well, maybe I can believe them, and I, I'm sure I shouldn't. It'll just end in heartbreak. But continue. I mean, I, I, I mean, it could it could be true. It, you know what he's saying could be right, but it's just like I, I, it, to me, it's less exciting to hear it from the person who's been lying about it for 30 years. All right, let me step in. Okay, this is where I want to step in because I think it's unfair to say that he's lying. And this is what, or that he lied because this is what, this is what the, the main chunk of time when Dan Aykroyd started doing his crystal head, uh, tours like 2007, 2008, he started doing a lot of promotion, a lot of radio interviews, and, and we really started seeing a lot of these interviews where he would say, "We're going in production. It's going to happen. The script's almost ready." We're going like and it, it became very much like a joke within the community. A lot of eye rolling. A lot of we heard this before. Um, there's two facts that make what he said yesterday a little bit different than before to me. The first one is that we know for a fact. That up until 2016, the only way that a Ghostbusters movie could be made was if the entire original cast, Bill, Dan, and Harold, Mm -hmm. and Ivan, signed off on it. Any one of them could say no and veto it because that's the way that their contracts were structured uh, to get Ghostbusters 2 done. We know for a fact Bill Murray never wanted to do it, and he was the main reason why it didn't happen at that time. One of the other main reasons was that the Ghostbusters 3 script that was written in 2010 by Lee Eisenberg and Gene Stupinski, I think I got those names right, they made year one with Harold Ramis, and that movie flopped. Sony was very high on them and their script, and that movie tanked, and that, along with the Bill Murray stuff, really affected it. But I think the biggest thing people seem to forget, and not forget, but maybe it's not acknowledged that much, is and it's been said, you know, we just read Violet Ramis' book, and uh, we know Harold Ramis was very sick for like four years, and nobody knew about it. And whatever they were working on was Harold Ramis was going to be involved in, Egon was going to be part of the movie, and they were waiting on him to get better in order to try to make Ghostbusters work. Now, having said all of that, it's all part of the factor, and it's all it's also true that Dan Aykroyd has been the biggest cheerleader for Ghostbusters for a very long time. So I don't know where that leaves us other than I still get excited when he talks about it, 
And we the 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 main difference is that a couple months ago Ivan Reitman said things that kind of aligned with this, which are there are plans. We're gonna have to probably wait till June at FanFest to know what those plans are. So I'm trying to at least stay cautiously optimistic that something's going to happen. Now, Dan last night in that interview could have been talking about an animated movie the entire time. He never said we're making a live action movie. They could do a reunion animated. Like we don't know. So I I think the biggest thing to take away is that we know nothing. <laughs> yeah. So temper your expectations. So very I'm take my fucks back. No, uh, I'm still giving it four fucks, but yeah, it's when you consider like the scope and the history of everything, it's like the Real odds quick, of it I, happening. You, it's, it, you, I want to talk about this a little bit yeah. more. You, Jake, what did you think about his comments about answer the call specifically? Um, well, I mean, I, I think that I don't think there was any real news there. Like, I, I, I think like, I mean, he said, you know, it didn't make the money and it's just not going to continue. And I, I thought that was kind of a, a well-known fact right. already. So, I mean, like it, it, it's always, it, it's nice to hear him say like, to come out and be like, Hey, you know what? Paul Feig made a good movie. They were good. You know? And I mean, like a, a lot, I've seen a lot of people today be like, Sony made him say that. I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, do you guys think it, like it was, Sony is like, you don't control Dr. Uncle Dan. Hey, no, you know, no, he's if, wild. If Sony, if Sony controlled what Dan Aykroyd said, then he would not have been talking about Ghostbusters for 30 years. But <laughs> yeah. I, I do like that he was like, yeah, I said something, but I was just kind of upset about some things, you know, because, you know, when it came out when he was yeah. just like kind of bashing Paul Oh, yeah, he's time. like, ah, well, he won't be back on the Sony lot anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of like that he, uh, you know, was just like, oops. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I think, okay, so real quick, we're going to be, uh, I think it's safe to say YHS is going to be extensively covering anything Ghostbusters related for forever. Yes. But especially going into the 35th anniversary, uh, assuming that there's going to be more and more news coming out, we're going to be talking about this a lot. And this is just the start of a lot of pain mm. and agony. But, he alluded to a team. Let's just say for for argument's sake, there's a team of filmmakers working on a new Ghostbusters movie. The three teams that come off to mind right off the bat, there's four teams that actually come off to off my tongue. The Russo brothers. And I wouldn't even include them, but it's only because they've been loosely attached to a Ghostbusters project before. Mm-hmm. The Duffer brothers. Mm-hmm. Who have a good relationship very with good Ghost Core, yeah. Good relationship with Sony, good relationship with Ghost Core. Uh, and obviously, they haven't done a movie yet, but they've done Stranger Things, and you know they're getting offers. Mm-hmm. The third team that comes to mind are Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who also were loosely tied to a Ghostbusters film five, six years ago. Their stock has fallen a little bit. You know, they were fired from their last movie. Yeah, that's exactly what I... The <laughs> so they might be I like, hey, of. guys, we got to do, do something here. Um, and then the fourth group, I'm going to look up their names because they're not coming uh, right off the top of my mind. But the Wachowski brothers. The Wachowski brothers. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and I'm thinking that a Matrix <laughs> Speed Racer Ghostbusters mashup Ooh, is... Matthew re- Fox is a Ghostbuster? I okay. would take that. Do it. I would there take is that. no spoon. Whoa. <laughs> uh, Dan Aykroyd is the Oracle. Uh, <laughs> Dude, yes. <laughs> hey, real quick, before I get to that fourth team, somebody, one of the crazy people who commented on YHS today, they had an idea for a Ghostbusters sequel that's literally the best idea I've ever heard. They're like... What if they kind of retcon the end of Ghostbusters 2 and Vigo actually took over the world? And it's 30 years later of Vigo's rule. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, That'd be great. Sign, sign me up. And Janosh and Dana start, are like together. Wait, it starts yeah. off in Janosh and a fucking... Um, Dana are like living in an apartment together. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, uh, something like that. Um, okay. God, we're going to have some fun talking about this stuff. Um, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein are the other uh, folks that I was thinking of. They wrote Spider-Man Homecoming and uh, have had some success. Uh, I think they're going to be... They're, they're supposed to be doing the Flash movie, but who knows if that's actually going to happen. Hmm. So, do any of those names pique anybody's interest? I know there's probably a million other people it could or should be, but when it comes to those teams right off the bat... Any, any which way you I don't think you would I, I don't think I have strong feelings toward like stronger feelings towards any of those people. Like I think they're all they're all really good in different ways, and I think probably all of these teams would be could do some good stuff. I, I don't think there's anybody here that I'm like, oh, it needs to be these people. Mm-hmm. I think it needs to be the Russos. <laughs> yeah, I, you said them first, and I was gonna say they're kind of like the like the ones that got away. Like I just I feel like they would be a really good match because they have some level of like I don't know if it's dramatic chops or action that they do better, but kind of like I think there's like a serious tone that they can capture that you need to have to counteract the some of the the jokes and uh, the humor in Ghostbusters to strike that balance. Um, so I'd like to see that. I mean, Denver if you look Brothers, at a movie like. Yeah, too. Like uh, Infinity War or, or Civil War, like it's a good balance of action and comedy. And yeah. that's those. I I agree that those movies are very good, and I think that they're the Russo brothers. Marvel films are among the better of the Marvel films, but they don't feel very Ghostbusters like to me. Like that doesn't seem like the kind of feel that would make. A ghost. I don't know. Like that yeah. doesn't. Like when no, I'm I mean, watching those Infinity are good War, too. that doesn't feel like Ghostbusters to me. I mm-hmm. think so. Mm. I think it's safe to so. Stranger Things season three just wrapped filming. Stranger Things is a very big deal. I know we've had some different opinions than other folks on on season two. Maybe it wasn't quite what it could have been, but I, I think maybe the Duffers could do a good job with Ghostbusters. I think they at least understand the tone. Yeah, or would be able to mimic it pretty, pretty well. So it wouldn't surprise me if if they had some involvement either. Yeah, my my other thing here is that I, I I'm not convinced that just Dan Aykroyd saying the word team means that it, it it's like a writing duo or something. He could he could just be using that word team, and it could be just any number of people could be three people working could be on a script. Podcast. just James Gunn. What if it's us? <laughs> what, Are if, we writing what if we, what if we get the call? What if the next Ghostbusters <laughs> yes, movie have some answers the call? <laughs> what if the next Ghostbusters movie is just the three of us in a room pitching ideas for a Ghostbusters movie? God. It's and then so getting attacked meta. by ghosts. Yes. <laughs> Actually getting attacked. And like defend our toy room. Sure. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we, it's like Vigo's the mayor in ours. But yeah, you are also guy. Oscar. And I'm also Oscar. You're also Oscar. And Dana. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2018. You I can do whatever I want. Both. Yeah. <laughs> Dual role. Cool. Imagine what my Oscar speech would be like. Oh, my Oscar oh, speech. Oh, your Oscar speech. Oh. Dang. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. Either way. Whoa. Dragon Con costume, dresses Oscar, holding an Oscar. You're an Oscar speech. Eating an Oscar Meyer Wiener. Yeah, okay. Here's my problem. <laughs> Named after a hot dog, you poor, poor man. Uh, can we do <laughs> Ghostbusters quotes again? I know it became very, like, faux pas in our community to be the person quoting Ghostbusters, but I do like quoting my favorite movies. Yeah. Yeah, do it. You bring, do whatever you want. Bring back the quotes. Totally geeking Don't listen out. Don't to those right guys. Totally geeking out. That's not a quote. That's not a quote. Uh, so... We're going to be talking about it. And thank you to everybody for uh, we kind of fanned the flame a little bit Uh, as of recording. We're the only outlet who has uh, posted any of the video of the interview. So if uh, if it all blows up in anybody's face. God, I bet Eric's going to email me tomorrow. We're going to get a cease and desist. from Take Sony. That down. No, no, no. Dan Aykroyd's getting that cease and desist because he was the one talking. Where'd you find it? Hey, the only thing I'm going to cease and desist is twisting open a bottle of Crystal Ed vodka and making myself a little martini. Mm. All right. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. I love hearing Jake laugh. It's like hearing your child laugh for the first time. <laughs> Next up, we are self-proclaimed the number one child's play podcast in the world. Oh my God. That's got to be a shirt. shirt. 
Yeah. Number one. That hold on, I'm writing it down. Self proclaimed. Self proclaimed number one child's play podcast in the world. <laughs> Nobody talks about child's play like we do. Number one. All yes, right. it's true. I agree. All right. There's a new movie coming out. They're remaking the first movie. They announced the release date. It's going to be, what is it, June 19th next year? Something like that? I think so. It's 21st. June 21st, 2019. Ooh, Even better. We will be coming down from the high of Ghostbusters Fan Fest. And then we will be taking on Child's Our number Play. one self-proclaimed franchise. We, yes, we will move <laughs> on from Ghostbusters and also be Child's Play. Uh, <laughs> they released a poster for the movie. They released a, uh, um, oh yeah, so it's going to be on the 21st of June, the same day as Toy Story 4. I think this is genius marketing. I love that. I that love is my it. Fa- listen, that is my favorite thing ever. I really hope neither one of these movies gets moved because I am so looking forward to seeing both of these movies on the same day. It's well, what I'm amazing. looking forward to is yeah. like they got to play into it with the marketing. Like it would I be so... so fun refresh my memory isn't there like a connection between like andy's name from toy story is taken from child's play or is that like a well i mean andy it's the and aren't there like little like like horror movies like like horror movie easter eggs in toy story toy story am i correct Uh, there might be okay other but i don't know of any other than his name there's a shining 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 easter egg okay so that's just cool that they're both opening on the same day i really like that too um so the poster's out jake we're yeah. throwing it to you when it comes um, to the Child's Play remake poster and release date and anything else related to Child's Play being remade. How many <laughs> fucks do you give? I gave this. Po- I gave it two fucks. Uh, I, I love this poster. I think it looks great. I think like, you know, whenever whenever we first heard there was going to be a remake, um, I think a lot of people and a lot of people still are uh, are very vocally against this Uh and it seemed like a weird choice, but everything we've seen from it so far looks really good to me. Like, um, I, I, I we've talked about this already. I, I have come to kind of like weird versions of like, you know, like to me, it's fine that it's not exactly the same. This box that's on the on the poster it looks a lot like the good guy. Like it looks like the good guy box. They changed the name, but I don't, that doesn't bother me at all because like, like you pointed out, Craig, like, wasn't that what the original title or wasn't that the original doll was called like a buddy doll? Yeah, there it was, they, they were, you know, one of the inspirations for, for Chucky was the, my buddy doll, you know, which looks like Chucky. I like this poster. I like I like that it's staying pretty close, but also being like its own new thing. I'm into it. Mm-hmm. All right. Abigail. Dude, I mean, <clears throat> I gave this one, one fuck. One concerned fuck. I mean, I've mentioned that I'm a little bit concerned about this movie um, because of like the artificial intelligence thing and because it's not like necessarily like within the the rules of the first one um but i really like this poster and i also really like the fact that it's being released on the same day as toy story i think that's clever and i think it shows that there's some knowledge of like the the fandom or like the the I think it's it, it makes sense. So it shows that they know they're smart. Is what I'm saying. It's it smart feels marketing. like play, it feels playful. Like playful. That they would and, do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It feels like they were to be like, what if we release the same day as Toy Story? Because it do, these are not competing movies. No, not right, at all. Right. Like no one's not going to go see Child's Play because they went and saw Toy but Story. But in some way, it's like they're able to take some of that momentum and the um, the fact that everyone's talking about Toy Story anyway to be part of that conversation and put their movie in there. Like makes a lot of sense. And like Jake, I'd want to see it back to back. I think it makes yeah. sense. And it the, feels like yeah. tongue in cheek and kind mm-hmm. of silly. And it's like, that seems like a marketing move that the old child's play movies would have done. Yeah. Couple uh, observations. A, it's a very cool poster. I like it a lot. Um, it, it looks different than a lot of modern teaser posters. Kind of has a throwback feel to it. I like that they're using the original uh, child's play font for the logo. Um, mm-hmm. I think some people were quick to say his name wasn't going to be Chucky anymore, but I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, the old way, the the good guy doll, each one had a different name, and 
the body that possessed the doll was Charles Lee Ray. So he said, it's not like it's a Chucky on the box is what I'm saying. Exactly. Um, yeah. And uh, maybe there's it a, was good, it was good guy. It was good guy. Yeah, it's a that good was guy. on the box, which um, maybe it's a rights thing. Maybe they just changed it. Maybe it's still the good guys toy company and they make the uh, the buddy doll. Like we don't know those things yet. Mm-hmm. And yep. even if they do change those things. Those are kind of the, the minor things that really don't affect the quality of the movie. Like, if you're caught up on that, then you're probably uh, yeah. a, a yes, have some listener. Yeah. <laughs> the minutia. Because we all get caught it. up in minutia. Yeah. Um, so, if you look in the background, you see all the other boxes, and you do see kind of the, the design of the Chucky on the back of the box and the side of the box. Um, so It's like the factory where they're being shipped out, which kind of reminds you of the second... It Charles evokes Landon. a lot of the feelings mm-hmm. you, you, you like, okay, I'll put it this way. If this poster didn't say child's play on it and you just looked at it, you'd go, what is this child's play movie? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know what it is. <laughs> yeah. That's a yellow, yellow box, box with the window. So you yeah. can see his yeah. face through the box. Like yeah. that's exactly what it some, looks like. That's some of the most iconic, like the, the end of the original child's play movie, when you see all the boxes crashing down in the toy store and all that kind of stuff. I feel like that is, that's something that people recognize. Um, and Listen. that gives me good feelings. Also, like the little cartoon, the drawing of uh, Chucky on the side of the box is like very, yep. very cute. I like his hair. Being the self-proclaimed. Pl- <laughs> <laughs> what am I trying to say? Self-proclaimed number one child's play podcast in the world. In the, in the in entire the world. world. I think we are approving of this poster and yeah. the release date. And uh, it's kind of like. It's twenty. It's going to be 2019, and we're getting a new Child's Play movie, so who the, why are we complaining? And it's going to be in theaters. It's not going to be on I Netflix. Can't, mm-hmm. Dude, I, I I don't understand, like, the, the people who are, the people who are, like, big, like, I, I'm a big Chucky fan. Like, we've talked about, we've done multiple episodes. You just said it. We talked about this Chucky way. a lot. We reposted our retrospective of Child's Play last week for the 30th yeah. anniversary. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. I got to go find that episode to repost. And I went to our directory and searched the keyword Child's Play and like 30 episodes came up. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> like and we're at what? Like literally a third of our episodes were touching on Child's Play a little yes. bit. Yes, dude. Yeah. Yes, I know. Like I forgot too. I was talking to a girl before Halloween. She's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do a Chucky costume. And I was like, oh cool. We, you know, I like that. Then I was like scrolling through my phone. I was like, yeah, I've got pictures with Andy. Uh, we, you know, we talked to yeah, him. We, we interviewed, interviewed him. Vincent. <laughs> we did. I was like, wow. How we should wow. interview Andy from Toy Story next. Next, for sure. <laughs> Get him on. For just keep consistent. Um, yeah. On a side note, sure. it's cool we're getting a new Toy Story movie because this movie, like, there's no reason to think that it won't be good because the first three are all very good. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. okay. Are we talking about Toy Story now? Yeah. Yeah, and Keen Peel are in it. Key it's going to be in awesome. It. Very excited. Uh, if you don't think that Key and Peele's characters from that movie are already going to get their own spinoff movie. Oh, it's already like, been written. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're excited about Child's Play. Like the cast, like the box. I bet we're getting a trailer in the next couple months. Yeah, probably. I mean, it comes out in June. Cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, Orion is putting out movies because that logo is everything to, to somebody who watched movies in the 80s. Yeah, I mm-hmm. looked at that in the bottom corner. I was like, I like that. Or as I called it my entire childhood, Orion. Orion. Oh, Orion. <laughs> That's what I called Bill and Ted. Orion. Uh... <laughs> I'm not smart is what I'm saying. <laughs> we got it. All right. Y'all ready to move on? Yes. Let's do it. Um, Leprechaun Returns is also happening again. <laughs> it's 2018 and we're getting a new Leprechaun movie. Comes out in a few short weeks. It's like we're making the news. <laughs> Can we also be the self-proclaimed uh, number one leprechaun podcast in the world? Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna we be can our work to become that way. This is what it's going to be. We need to do a commercial that's like your number one source for child's play, leprechaun, oh, yes, and yes, Twister yes. news. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. We- yes. 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 Uh, leprechaun like it. returns. It's a new trailer. It's a. Uh, a selective sequel in the vein of the new Halloween. It is a direct sequel to the first movie, unfortunately ignoring all of the events. Well, maybe. Maybe they'll... I hope they reference them. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Warwick Davis is not in this film, but we did get a trailer today. Abigail, who's first this time? Is it you? I think everyone wants to hear Jake's thoughts. Well, we'll go Let's to you. Let's be honest. <laughs> 
I, okay, we're, I'll get it Jake out of the way. Jake loves Leprechaun like some people love their grandparents. Uh, Jake like was hoarding all of his fucks. <laughs> Okay, I gave this. Jake three has bucks. all his fucks in a, a bucket of gold. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I want to write an episode where I don't know what this is with the leprechauns after the fucks and the fuck budget. Love so it. So he comes see us have some podcasts. That's okay, beautiful. Yeah. dude. Yes, he's probably in our attic right now. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm giving this three very very excited fucks because this trailer has the leprechaun. I think he's on a drone at one point. I don't know. He's like. <laughs> Um, and I was like, wait, why does this look good? Um, for some reason, like, I just, I, oh, well, first of all, we get what's his name back? Uh, the friend? Ozzy. Ozzy's back. Oh, and, and I, hold on. Are I'm we going to talk about, no. I'm calling you out already. Yeah, call me out. So the trailer starts and you see Ozzy driving and Abby goes, oh, he's smart now. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, is he? You're like, you, she's like, well, you can tell. Look how smart he is now. I was like, I don't they know what got you're it. seeing. Brain he's surgery. driving. Dude, well, Fucking Michael Myers can drive. You know what? Can drive. The leprechaun can drive too. You're right. Uh, yeah, I don't need to say too much about this other than it feels like the original leprechaun and like all leprechaun movies. It seems like very silly. Um, but for I also like these uh, the girls who are in this movie. I think it's like a sorority house and they're like going green and like that's the whole thing. And uh, they like go down the well for like a natural source of water. That's like that's when they get the leprechaun. I don't really know. This leprechaun is very cute and he I, I just it, it looks gory and graphic and like it's hitting all the notes from the first one. I'm very excited about it and uh, that's literally all I have to say. There's a cute ass little leprechaun. So and it looks faithful to the originals. Jake, what are you thinking? Um, I I also gave it three fucks. Mm. Uh, yeah, this movie looks amazing. It looks dumb and silly and it looks very funny. The fact that it, there seems to be uh, a reoccurring joke of people taking selfies with a leprechaun is the funniest thing that I've ever heard of. <laughs> like it happens twice in the trailer. Um, yeah, it look like it, it also parts of it. Parts of it look kind of ser- yeah, as serious as you can be for a leprechaun film. Like the first movie had a few serious moments and like just the whole opening of the trailer getting Ozzy, you know, being like, you know, we took care of that. And I love that his ears still fucked up. His yeah, ears fucked up, stitches, like knowing yeah. that something's wrong there. And there's like a few really cool gag, like the the little gag with him coming out of the hat was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, like hiding in the mailbox, like that stuff. It seems very fun. Like I do wish it was Warwick Davis, but yeah. after getting over that fact, like this dude seems to be doing a pretty good job. Of, what about the part yes. where there's like twenty really tiny leprechauns? They're just all little. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm. I, I'm all in for this movie. Well, let's I'm give ready, credit. I'm ready to see it. Um, obviously, we all love Warwick Davis, but he's getting a little bit older. Maybe he could handle the rigorous demands of a new Leprechaun film. I, a lot of, a I, lot of I shoes think, to shine. I think it's. I think it's a hundred percent. Maybe they couldn't pay him, kind of thing. I, I and I wonder if they. They're like, even, can we pay you in gold? Well, <laughs> I wonder if they even approached him. You know how like sometimes. You know, it's like it's direct to digital, like the sci fi channels making it. The budget is not quite there. It's probably going to have a lot of weird, bad, silly CGI in it. I bet they were probably like, we're not going to be able to get Warwick Davis. I probably didn't even try. You know Um, what I mean? Couple of. Yeah, I can see your point. Let's give them credit. The new Leprechaun is played by an actor named Lyndon Porco. Mm -hmm. Uh, Although he's 23 years old, uh, Wikipedia lists him as a Canadian dwarf child actor. Uh, so they should update that. Um, fun fact, he, before Leprechaun Returns, his last movie was playing the body double of Chucky in Cult of Chucky. Oh. So, wow. Whoa! You thought we Jake, would... it's like it's happening. <laughs> They're getting together. Horror um, movie royalty. Yes. Um, and uh, he's done some other stuff. So, uh, and... What did you guys think of the design of the leprechaun? It's a little bit different, but ba- basically, it's a he's, scary. He's monster basically man. the he's basically the same. Like his his, his face, like they. Uh, there's a few like this. His skin tone is a, is a weird color, and it's dark a lot, so it's hard to really tell. But generally, he looks basically the same. You know, he's he's wearing the same kind of outfit. He's got the his hair. It just he looks it looks like they did their best at trying to make 
him look basically exactly the same. Yeah. Um, also, all the selfies that are taken with the leprechaun look really fun. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Well, that needs to be a that that should be a a thing at Universal Studios. You just get your like you know how they have the you yes. get a picture with the Velociraptor, the Velociraptor encounter. They should have a, a leprechaun encounter. You just take a selfie. Dude, there should be a leprechaun scare zone where you get to do that because I like that idea a lot. Everything's yeah. a scare zone for me. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Help me! Help me! <laughs> help me! <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah, we're all excited. It's gonna oh, be also it's coming out what digital uh, on demand December. 11th, yeah, maybe so. there'll be a DVD. Maybe Soon, we should yeah. we should have a YHS viewing party for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, I like his voice in this movie too. It's like it's just cute. I mean, it's a, not Warwick Davis, but it's its own thing. It's so. its own I, thing. I hope there's a shoes shining scene. God, oh. me too. Me too. I think every Leprechaun movie deserves a little. Shoe shining scene. I would love to throw shoes at a leprechaun. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> yeah, um, it's another scare zone. I'd love to steal his gold too. Yes. They should make me a villain in one of these movies. Yeah, like I'm competing with his gold. Like I'm like, uh, and I have that accent that I just did. And I'm like, that little that little green monster's no match for me, Cra- Craig. Be, You're just the villain as I'm yourself. The villain. Yeah, and I'm myself. Okay. Okay. Right. So did everybody turn off the podcast? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get back to the Chucky Leprechaun mashup, please. Dude, if there was a if hey, the, you know if like, Bill Paxton's I, in this movie, <laughs> secret secret cameo. Um, it's a force stronger than a twister. It's a leprechaun. <laughs> he, pl- <laughs> <laughs> he plays the rotting body of the leprechaun at the bottom of the well in the beginning oh, of the movie. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> no. You know, why Why isn't there You've like... You've never seen uh, it steal this gold. It steal <laughs> that gold. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. It come after your gold. It come after your gold. <laughs> All right, what were you saying? Uh, when are we going to get like in a, a Marvel... Avengers style like meetup of all these horror movie like I know they I, you know like they they made Freddy versus Jason it didn't it didn't really work well we had uh, the idea and I don't know if this is the most original idea but it was to remake Monster Squad with all the slasher people yeah, yeah. something like that or it almost makes me feel like if they made if they if they I mean obviously like none of these guys are all in the same you know, studio or anything. So it would, it would take so much like mm-hmm. deals among studios. Oh, it'd be but, like, so hard to, to pull the if, strings to get Chucky and the Leprechaun. Dude, but I want Chucky, Leprechaun and worked. Gremlins. Yeah. Or, I want or, if, or if we're pretending none of that existed, like okay. none of the technical bullshit, what would it be like? They could do, you know, they could do all of, all of these franchises that have their own films and then maybe by the time you get to the third movie of for each, you, you start figuring out a reason to have them all kind of converge, team up together, and 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 maybe they're not fighting each other, but like maybe a Suicide it's like Squad. A, I don't know. Like maybe maybe it's <laughs> the like government. This, hi- yeah, the government the hires. Slashers. They're <laughs> used as like weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, I like it. This is what it is. It's Here it expendable. is. Yeah. We're at war again. And we're losing veterans. <laughs> we're lo- we're losing military God, this men. This sounds tough already. Mm-hmm. We're losing, we're losing the war. So the send, government. Send in Freddy. Gets, <laughs> oh the man! The government. No. Gets Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, Pinhead, Chucky, the Leprechaun. Dude, we see the enemy's camp. All the people, all the uh, soldiers sleeping, and yes. then like turning over and tossing and being brought up onto the ceiling, bleeding out. Yes. yes. I'm- Freddy's I'm there. Thinking, I'm thinking more of a like, what if we get a movie that's about all of the like pe- the survivors from all these movies? So you oh. got like you got like Laurie Strode and you're, you're talking about like a, a Final Girl movie, mm-hmm. yeah. And and the, and they're kind of all they kind you know no one believes that Chucky was real. You know, nobody believes you when you tell them there's a fucking leprechaun killing people. No one believes all this shit. So they find each other. Yeah. And a support through group. the internet. Yeah. I tried and to write that like, movie. It's already It's like this been meetup for yes. all these people who have been dealing with these like supernatural killers. It's like a support group. Yeah. 
But the killers are all still after them. So they all end up in the same place. Mm -hmm. They're having they're having like a convention. They all meet up in a hotel. Yeah. And then they'll get tracked down and have to face off. Everybody shows up. Yeah. I love it. I think that's a great idea. Chucky and the leprechaun are like making deals. Yeah. They're like, all right, well, I'll help you kill that girl. Yeah. You got to give me. And this exists in a world where all the movies don't exist, but like all the, it's all just very real. And also everybody's mad at Freddy because he'll only kill when all, everybody falls asleep. So it's like the middle of the day. Everybody's at the (laughs) pool. They miss miss the kills. They miss the kills. (laughs) They're like, they're like, did you hear what Freddy did last night while we were all fucking asleep again? I wanted to see that. <laughs> did you guys? Hey, dude. Did you guys see what Jason did at the vending machine last night? <laughs> he just kept hitting it. <laughs> I was like, put a fucking all quarter. We, we told we him we had to put it face just down. Put a fucking dollar in there, dummy. He just kept crumpling it up. I had to try to explain the concept of money to Jason last <laughs> night. I don't know who would be saying that, but. Uh, uh, Oh, probably Freddy. No, Chucky. Chucky's like, Chucky's I'm a like, child. Why that guy talk? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this one? <laughs> I want to see Chucky push uh, Jason in the pool. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, are they in a hotel? Because I feel like they're all in a hotel. Okay, yeah, it's at a resort. They're in the yeah, Bahamas. It's a resort hotel oh. in the Bahamas. Uh, the shark from Jaws is there. <laughs> oh, Bruce, just when you think it's over. Oh, I, he's like, there's That's this the cube. last scene this in the movies. A- Jason's on the chain in the bottom of the ocean, and Bruce comes up and eats Jason. Oh, uh. Dude, I love that. And, like, Stripe's riding him. It's great. Who? Stripe from uh, Gremlins. Is riding I Bruce? I just want yep. them there, too. Yes. <laughs> Electricity Gremlin water. jumps in the water, and everybody dies. Oh, <laughs> God. I love it. It's fun. I just love the idea of Chucky just being so annoyed with Jason the entire time. Yes. <laughs> Ch- like Ch- the only like all the all the villains like the, they kind of got a truce where they're not you know fighting each other, but Chucky keeps trying to kill Jason, and it's just like cute. All uh, yeah, and, and it's cute because he's so little and he can't do anything to yes. Jason. Come on, just fucking let me do it. <laughs> We're not gonna miss this fucking guy. I just guy. Been imagining, yes, like I'm, him with his hand, like on Chucky's head, and he's just like throwing punches with his knives. Too. At this point, let's just get Bradley Cooper to voice Chucky. <laughs> cool. It so just make this him... is called Slashers vs. Final Girls, or we that's a working title. We'll get something better. It's called Slashers of the that's Galaxy. We'll, cool. We'll the cool. Slasher Squad. No, Slashers <laughs> of the Galaxy. Uh, <laughs> I like Slashers. It's uh, Slashers on vacation. I don't know. (laughs) Slashers in Las Vegas. National National Lampoon. We both went for it at the same time. National (laughs) Lampoon Slasher vacation. National Lampoon Slasher vacation. Chevy Chase has got to be in it. We just have to get the rights to to National Lampoon. There we go. It's good. (laughs) Slasher vacation. All right. You guys ready for the last one here? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Kong vs. Godzilla. The synopsis is out. We're about six months away from... I don't know, eight months. All I know is Godzilla King of the Monsters is next year. The following that up with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one's quite a while away. Quite a while away. We're a couple years away from Godzilla vs. Kong. So I'm going to read the synopsis and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. It's a time when monsters walk the earth. Humanity's fight for its future sets Godzilla and Kong on a collision course that will see the two most powerful forces of nature on the planet collide in a spectacular battle for the ages. As Monarch embarks on a perilous mission into uncharted terrain and unearths clues to the Titan's origins, a human conspiracy threatens to wipe the creatures, both good and bad, from the face of Earth forever. Jacob Walsh, when it comes to King Kong and Godzilla getting together in 2019, 2020, 2021, whenever this movie's going to happen, how many fucks do you give? I gave it all the fucks I had left, which was three. Um, Mm -hmm. I am. I mean, I'm very excited for more Godzilla, more King Kong, more any monsters. And I'm just like, it it almost feels unreal for some like I grew up on Godzilla watching it my entire life. And it's always been kind of one of the things where, you know, 
I don't know a whole lot of other people like personally who fucking love Godzilla. You know, there are a few here and there. There are people like everybody's probably seen one or two, but it's not like one of those. It's not like the Avengers or it's like, you know, we all love Ghostbusters. It's it's kind of almost like a a, a smaller thing. And to be getting American like we already got one American Godzilla that to, that I really loved and to be getting like there's a new one coming out and then there's going to be a Godzilla versus Kong. And we're going to see all of like, we're already going to see, you know, three or four monsters from the original Toho universe. And then we're probably going to be seeing more and God, and like, we don't know it's still so early and it's, and that synopsis is still very vague, Mm -hmm. but like, I feel like Godzilla versus Kong is going to be, kind of like an all out. I think, I feel like there's going to be a lot going on. Um, they're both good guys. So it's weird that they're fighting each other. Um, which makes me think, you know, there's going to be a reason for them to team up in the end. Um, I just, I'm, I, I can't even like speak properly about it. It's it. Godzilla is on my, it's my top. It's always, he's always been, my number one franchise, number one everything, and I cannot wait to see this movie. Dang. Very well. Very well said. Wow. Yes, very well said. And now I'm about to give zero fucks because I have <laughs> I have no fucks left um, to give to Godzilla versus King Kong. Um, honestly, I felt like I didn't think that synopsis gave me enough information to go on. Um, And also, I'm basing my zero fucks on the fact that uh, I haven't seen King of the Monsters yet. So once you haven't, you're way behind. Me personally, haven't (laughs) seen it yet. All right, guys. Also, is it? I don't know if I took this the wrong way, but knowing that because I was reading an article about this and it said that Kyle Chandler and Millie Bobby Brown would be returning in this movie. I feel like that was sort of a spoiler because now you know they survive like King of the Monsters. Is yeah, that but you're not going to kill silly? off. They're not going to kill off Millie Bobby. Okay. I don't yeah, think I don't, these I movies are... Like I shouldn't that. care. Like, I'm overthinking it. I get it. But yeah, um, honestly... Yeah, I... I, I I like seeing that a few people are going to be returning because it keeps like it keeps a little bit of continuity because, you know, like Godzilla versus the first Godzilla film, like we're not getting any of those main characters like we we're, we're keeping Dr. Shirazawa and uh, I can't remember. I think there's one other character that works for Monarch that are, that are going to be in the next Godzilla movie. Okay. But besides that, it's like the main characters are different. You, you, like you just said, you got, you got Millie Bobby Brown. So yeah, I like that. They're keeping her throughout. Also like there's, uh, there's an old Godzilla versus King Tom that came out like in, I think the early, I, I don't know the exact date off the top of my head. I want to say early seventies. It was the, it was the very first Godzilla film to be in color. And uh, it's just cool that we're getting we're getting like a new version of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when it comes to I'm excited for you, Jake. I'm excited, too. I think these look like great movies. And honestly, um, we loved the trailer for I love the trailer for King of the Monsters. I think yeah. It's and I think the, like, listen, again, these movies like King Kong and Godzilla, those movies are so much better than they really have any business being. And everybody wants to see King Kong and Godzilla team up. The Kong and the Skull Island movie is much bigger. Like, traditionally, King Kong really would not stand a test against Godzilla. It's like... Like 20 feet tall. Yeah, it's like 20 feet tall. It's like putting the leprechaun against uh, Jason. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, it's not a whole lot of information, but there's plenty of fucks to go around, and I'm excited about it. I think uh, Skull Island's a great movie. Uh, 2014 Godzilla is, is... Really, really awesome. It's really mm-hmm. fun to go back and rewatch. There's some really good stuff in there. And uh, it's cool that they're building out a universe the right way. Mm. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't start it off is, with Kong know, versus like, Godzilla. Well, slow roll, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, DC. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's also like, you know, I look at my, I look at my DVD shelf and there are, uh, you know, I think I said this before. Count, you know, even if you count uh, the American Godzilla films, there there are I think thirty three at this point, thirty three Godzilla movies, and um, within those thirty three, you have 
uh, two or three different like timelines. You know what I mean? It's it's all one universe, but you get a, a couple different ongoing you know stories or continuities, and that's something that Toho has been building up. You know. Th- since 1954 when they made the first Godzilla movie and now we're kind of doing the same thing like this is going to be this is a universe now like this this is going to be the third and fourth movie in one continuity that you could you know like I'm looking forward to you know one day in the future being able to sit home and watch five movies in a row that are fairly new and like a new Godzilla universe like that to me is amazing. As long as in the fourth when they go to space, I'll be on I'll be on board. Really hoping for space. They're going to space in the next one. Godzilla with a lightsaber in space. They are gonna go to space. Well listen I'm just, I mean I'm just saying like I don't know I don't know what they're doing, but King Ghidorah is originally from space, so who knows? Yes, oh. Who knows? Who knows? Oh. And hey, hmm. a lot of the good ones are from space. Mm-hmm. But like my friend Peter Venkman said. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. That's the problem with aliens. Uh, Sometimes you get a nice one. Starman. E.T. <laughs> but like Godzilla, most of the time, they turn out to be some sort of big lizard. No. Guys, I'm bringing back Ghostbusters quotes. I knew it. I was going to say I wanted to stop you, but we talked Don't about that. Don't no, stop we said me. you could. Thank you. Thank yes, you. It feels I'm good. Sorry. For Abigail Gardner and Jacob Walsh, I'm just going to sign off here. We're making Ghostbusters quotes great again. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. Have some podcasts this week. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at YHS Podcasts. Head to Facebook.com slash Yes Have Some Cast. And if your friends want to know what podcast you're listening to, all you got to do is tell them that it's YHS Yes Have Some Podcast, Mm. the self-proclaimed number one child's play podcast in the world. Yes. We clear? Yes. Have we clear? We're we- clear, Doctor. Yeah. All right. We'll see everybody next week. Later, y'all. Have fun. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye guys.